Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with my special host, uh, Bud Vino. And we have a really good show for you today. We have a, great, a wonderful guest. Uh, before we, I introduce our guest, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the, what the upcoming advocacy events are, are happening and how we're developing them. Let's see. First of all, I'm working on a video. I'm working on a, a video with a program that I'm that um, that is like a global program of team management and leadership, um, and that's that I finally got uh, script approval. So now the next thing is is to actually videotape it and, and everything. Uh, what else? We are we've got a conference coming April 24th, and that is uh, that's in the works. I'm super excited about it, but. The, the most exciting, exciting um, immediate thing that's happening is in about 10 days, uh, December the 25th, we are doing an, a panel discussion, like a Christmas special of Custody Matters Live with some amazing, amazing guests on the show. Bud, would you like to share a little tidbit of who's going to be on our show? Oh, Danica, thank you so much. I would love to. First off, air date of the show, December 18, 2019, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Filling in for the great Wendy Perry, myself, and Danica Jones. Thank you, Danica. Yes. I'm so excited about this Christmas special, and we can call it that because it feels special already, right, Danica? Uh, I spoke with my man, Marky Mark Ludwig. Mark Ludwig, the founder and president of uh, Americans People Share Pairing. He'll be one of the, the, the uh, folks joining us for that Christmas special. I, I believe Wendy Perry will also be making an appearance. That's exciting. Uh, and also, there's a plethora of other people. Dr. Mark, I believe, which we're so excited about. And there's a variety of other ones. And there's going to be some others added, Danica. And we're so excited. Danica was almost out of breath when I spoke to her last night. She had so much going on. And we all do. It's great. The momentum is really building, Danica. And it continues tonight. Yes. I, you know, uh, speak. that's a great way to bring our guest in because... Our guest, his name is Chris Ann Dexler, and uh, he's an author. He's an author of a book we're going to share with you uh, called X's and O's, and he's actually been instrumental in getting some advocates on this Christmas special show, so I definitely acknowledge him for that. Welcome, Chris. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, it's, you know... Oh, oh, but I saw you raise your hand. I, yeah, I just want to say hello to, to uh, Chris, uh, a.k.a. Cal, right? And That's you know, right. It just by, by happenstance, and we say everything happens for a reason, Danica, I had the opportunity to speak with Chris for probably about a half an hour uh, last night. And it was great. I got to know him a little bit uh, off the air. So it makes it even more exciting today because he seems like a really great guy. So everything happens for a reason, and here we are. So, he, so Chris will be with us, too, as Danica mentioned on Christmas night. So Chris... Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. I'm excited about this because I think you have a lot to offer. Thank you. Thank you know, you. So one of the things I know, you know, the, the reason that most of the people who are doing the advocacy, they're, they're out in the front, on the front lines, have been touched by uh, parental alienation or uh, something that high conflict custody situations. And there are so many more who, um, you know, they, they went through what they went through and it's, and, you know, and then they're able to heal and go with their, go through their life. Or, you know, I guess the point what I'm trying to make is, um, if you, sometimes for me, it's been very therape therapeutic going at making a difference in the lives of other people, um, based upon the wisdoms, the hard one wisdoms. I've learned in going through a high conflict custody situation. And, um, and if that calls to you, I ask you just to, to be involved in some way, be a mentor. I've got, I'm, I've got people that I pair up as uh, mentors uh, to help people who are going through this situation. And if you uh, find yourself unable to do it, I, that is okay. Give yourself permission to, to, to say, you know what, this was too painful. And I want to get involved in, in giving back through, uh, you know, 
animal causes or, or, you know, Kiwanis Club or, or Rotary or whatever. But, um, but anyways, I just wanted to, to share that all of us have been touched by the very thing that has you watch our show. So, Chris, uh, yep. it is, so what I understand is you got into this work because of obviously a, a divorce and something that's interesting that's probably resonates with a lot of our viewers is, is you were accused of domestic violence and that was sort of like that door, like Bud calls it, that a lot of times people use it as that silver bullet to get them, get their foot in the door such that they can gain more and more and more territory. Men do it one way, women do it another way, and, um, and ultimately it ends up being a slippery slope for parents if they're not mindful about um, what, or they don't have somebody to say, this is what, um, this is where it can go. <laughs> Uh, all right, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, my, my whole story ended up uh, about 10 years ago. I was accused of domestic violence by my ex-wife. Nothing had ever transpired from that standpoint. But the, the thing that was really strange was she was using it as an advantage to try to take the kids away, to try to break up that relationship, to try to move on on her own way. And she had tried four different times to, to make this accusation. And after a while, the police kind of caught on to her story and felt like it was false. She tried to file a, a police report on these claims and the police looked into it, found out that it was a false police report and decided to go ahead and put together a uh, an arrest for her for, her, for filing a, a false report. But as a result, she decided to then step it up just a little bit more and file in an additional state with an, a new judge trying to change the story. And the unfortunate thing is when they end up telling themselves this and telling other people, they start believing these stories over and over and over again. And the, the strange thing about it is sometimes if you tell yourself a lie too often, it ends up becoming a reality to you. Absolutely. You know, and, and speaking of that, a lot of times there are some times where there was domestic violence involved in the, the marital relationship. Sure. However, sometimes parents will tag that onto the children. They'll say, you know, I, uh, we were in an abusive relationship, so now I have to protect the children from child abuse when there was no evidence of child abuse. Um, and that's where the judges, there should be blind, blind justice to say, um, you know, to, to be able to, to have something to, um, help me out, bud. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times it has a, um, whatever happens here doesn't mean that it correlates to here and, well, and I, judges I, are all I, subjective. Yeah, Danica, I think what you're trying to say too, see in family court too, you know, hearsay is everything's kind of fair game. So it's it's very common for these things to be attempted and 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 in court when they're heard and actually used as validation for keeping children from healthy, loving parents, I think is what you're trying to say. That should be uh, not a thing. Uh, we should base it on facts um, sure. and not on just uh, just allegations because humans are are human. So Unfortunately, sometimes if they think they get, get an advantage and they have that opportunity, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll succumb to that weakness and seize it. Just like sometimes people, there's a hundred dollar bill, uh, well, uh, or whatever it is, it's not right at all. But unfortunately, people seize that opportunity, especially when a lot of these attorneys that they're working with or have working for them are encouraging them to do that. Um, well, judge, judges see uh, a lot of this stuff as, as a presumption. Men are more aggressive or more physical. Women are more helpless in that way. So they just have this assumption that just because the story is told, it must be true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing is, is the, 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 in dependency court, there is a system in place to manage parents who are abusive and neglectful. And... Right. 
they can be found guilty of that. In Florida, it's the dependency court. And that's the appropriate place. When you're, you've got, you're in a custody battle and then you s seem to just like corner the other parent, your attorney corners the other parent into, and convinces them that the only way they can see their child is su by supervised visitation. And then that parent agrees, they autom automatically have, um, you know, they, they've got this shadow of doubt as far as the, their parenting skills on them. And it's just this slippery slope. Their right. the family courts, judges have no business um, being prejudiced one over the other based upon accusations. Well, yeah, the, the I, hard thing, go ahead, Cal, go ahead. Well, the hard thing about it is a lot of parents that end up going through PA are so desperate to have that relationship with their kids that they will agree to, even if it's a supervised visitation or no overnights or some of those other things that the courts end up using, that they will go down that road. And once you do uh, commit to that, then right. it is, like you said, Danica, the, this thing of presumption of guilt at that point. And there's really no way to get out from under that once you've committed to it. Exactly, Cal. And if, if I could, Danica, quickly, what, and, and this is how it all unfortunately blends together because when you have these silver bullet attempts, uh, what, it, especially if you're going pro se, a lot of people go into this and they don't get an attorney and they don't really know much about it. They just think if they're doing right, it'll all work out. Um, so then all of a sudden they get these silver bullets thrown and a lot of times people's reaction uh, is that of, uh, you know, and they, they react very emotionally and it almost kind of proves um, the person's case, even though it doesn't. And then, as you said, they feel like they're, they're actually getting a gift by being allowed to even see their child uh, in a supervised setting. And they have that mindset. And as you said, once you do that, minimize, marginalize yourself and allow that, it's a, it's a, it's a slippery, almost impossible slope to climb back up. And, and I'll tell you, and I keep going back to the mentorship program. Attorneys, you can't, and Chris, you know for a fact that you can't always trust your own attorney to be mm -hmm. um, speaking in your best interest because, for, first of all, uh, they want to make sure that all of their cases go in their favor with the judge. So it's, it's kind of an incestuous relationship between the attorneys and the judges. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, I hate to say that you can't trust your attorneys, but uh, you, you really have to have somebody alongside of you that has, has no dog in the fight, like, like a mentor or something like that. Yeah. What, one of the things that my attorney, one of my attorneys ended up telling me is it's not about the facts. It's, it's 90% about possession of your kids and 10% about the facts. He said a lot of, there's a lot of backdoor deals that are going on. Attorneys are running a business and what they need to do is they end up striking deals with these judges and you are just a number. You are just someone that's there just bringing them their income so that their business can run. And that is something that we have to really understand. Unless we end up articulating exactly what we need and what our expectations are, an attorney is just going to run free and just do whatever they want to do typically. Yeah. I, yeah you know, I'm sorry, Danica, go ahead. Well, I was thinking, you know, I, I have a friend of mine who's a family law attorney and, um, and they said that a lot of times they really do not like their clients, <clears throat> their clients, you know, they're think about it in family law, they're emotional. The parent is yeah. emotional because they've got, they've got some serious skin in the game and they're, you know, frustrated with how slow the process is going. They don't understand how the process is. And <laughs> attorneys are just, um, just almost just giving them lip service because, and, and that's where if a, if a, the client, if they matched them up with a, you know, the client up with someone and said, Hey, this is the process, um, you know, and just, and walked them every step of the way, you wouldn't have a client that you hated. Sure. Well, uh, Cal, it's kind of like what we, what we talked about last night when we got to know each other a little bit. There's no money in a cure when it comes to the, you know, uh, the uh, hospitals and things like that. We said the same thing, that analogy last night. 
it's the same thing in this family law uh, fiasco is they want to keep you going and bleed you out. So even the people that think that they're quote unquote winning and, and using the silver bullet and dragging it out, you're being played too. So sure. the, the, best, the best advice I can give too, and what I did when I went pro se is when those things were flung at me, I, I stood up and I didn't defend them at all. I said, I am not even going to validate with that with a response. It's absolutely ridiculous. I gave them nothing at all to go on. It was dropped right there. Now, again, that's not always going to happen where they were, but I wouldn't validate it at all. It's absolutely it's unfounded, ridiculous. I'm not going to allow for that, to, that toy to be used. It's not going to happen. Not today. Not, not on my watch. And uh, let's move on. And, they, and that's what happened. You give it no steam. You can't fight with someone who's not there. Right, Danica? So you don't give that any energy. Now, again, it's situational. But again, they want to bleed you. So again, be heightened and don't react. Because that's where you have all your power. Don't try to control other people or get them to do. You control yourself and the rest will follow. Danica. Yeah, you know, in, um, and the, I know for me, in, in my whole circumstance, I was terrified of the thought of doing it pro se because, I mean, and I, it was just that was my life was on the line my relationship with the children was on the line and i felt like i was going up against a big bully that could outwit me and for me um it, you know it, it was there's just no way that i uh in in that frame of mind those many years ago i could have handled it pro se which well what one thing that people need to understand going pro se though, is that there is a lot of education that you have to have. Um, right. You really have to educate yourself. And then you have to also remove a lot of the emotion from it because yeah. the emotion is the thing that will kill you. A judge will see right through that and they will go ahead and manipulate the whole situation as a result. Or you, or in a situation of being alienated, the whole thing, uh, alienators, they target, their target is, a, is their victim. Um, they're looking to make sure that, that, that their target ha is completely powerless. And when, if you look on the batterer's intervention power and control <clears throat> wheel, that wedge, there's a wedge on there that describes how they will actually use the children. They'll use anything at their disposal to, to, to target their victim and strip them of any power, any control. And, and that's what they uh, do. And it's just, uh, it's, it's devastating to be in there in an emotional, being uh, such, feeling powerless in the courts. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. So the thing is, is when you are being targeted and um, it can have you shift into a, kind of a, like a post-traumatic stress response, and then if you have mental health counselors on your case who are not educated on parental alienation and all that, they look at the, the post-traumatic stress response as somebody who's unstable. And they well, it, the connection that the alienator has generated that in them. And that was one of the things that Bud and I were talking about yesterday. A lot of this that goes on in parental alienation, and it's, and it's in both the kids as well as the adult that's being alienated. You, it, it's almost like having pneumonia, but everybody wants to go ahead and take care of the, the sniffles or the cough or the tiredness. And they don't want to really address the main, the main problem. Same thing in, in PA. We have a lot of depression. We have anxiety that goes on. There's suicide. There's um, financial grief there is just a whole bunch of abandonment and things to where people just feel like they're all on their own and the the mental the uh, the mental health area looks at it as oh well it's just about the anxiety or it's about the depression and the, the courts look at it as oh well this person is crazy and they're suicidal and they've got these other problems and they're on drugs they're on alcohol but nobody's really looking at it as all of these things are linked as a result of a major trauma that has happened. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Cal, I, I couldn't agree more with you at all. And we did speak about that last night at length and we, we will some more. 
Um, the one thing I want to speak on quickly, go back to what you said, because you hit the nail on the head. Uh, That's why I love you already. Knowledge yeah. is power, um, folks. So uh, Cal hit the nail on the head when he said, educate yourself, because it's just like anything when, when you're younger or if you are young out there or whatever you're doing, <laughs> college, when you study for a test, you go in, you're more confident. Analogize a physical fight. If you're going into a boxing match and you don't train at all and you eat pizza the whole time and you go in, you're not going to be too confident. You're not, you've got to get yourself mentally prepared just like if you're, you're training. And look at it that way. And knowledge is power. Study. If you want to go pro se, you know, you got, I mean, it's all in and, and it's tiring. And you've got to study and study three in the morning. But because my mentality and what you have to do is say, I'm going to outstudy them. I'm going to outwork them because they're not going to defeat me in that way. And you do it through love. You keep studying. And when you go in, that's when you'll have the confidence. You see what you're up against and you go in at your best at 110%. And that's where you'll have your chin up authentically. So Cal, I, I applaud you for mentioning that. And we're going to get to quickly. You mentioned a huge word. And again, everything happens for a reason. And I wrote it down and I mentioned it last week. We discussed it. Value. Yes. And, and that self-worth. And, and so that's what it boils down to. That'll breed confidence. The more educated you become, the more powerful you become. So awesome stuff, Cal. Awesome stuff. Okay, so I don't want us to run out of time before we talk about his book. Um, yeah, would you like to show us um, your book so we so that our viewers can Absolutely. see? Uh, hold on a minute. Uh, <laughs> Got a, so okay, X's and O's. All right, share with us a little bit about the book, what the content is, and how it can and help our viewers uh, and how they can get a copy. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to segue off of what Bud was just saying. Um, one of the, the hardest things for me was really trying to find my value. And going through the whole process of fighting in two separate states, two different courts, many different judges, all this stuff, I found myself just bogged down with so many different things. But when I ended up finding what my value was and knowing that it wasn't based off of the rejection of my kids or the rejection of my ex or all of these people that supposedly called themselves friends or being constantly questioned by family members, I looked at it from a standpoint. I had to take myself out of the whole situation and say, what have I learned through this whole process? And as a result, I was starting to write down different things of what I learned, how, to, how to, to navigate through the courts, how to go ahead, and what exactly am I going through with parental alienation? What is this? How is it affecting me? Um, some of the highs and lows, how to go ahead and love your children from a distance was one of the important things. Because here it is, at the time I was living down in Florida, and my kids were up in Illinois, and my ex was constantly filtering every single phone call and not allowing me to see my kids. And I had to come up with creative ideas of, well, when Christmas rolls around, how am I gonna go ahead and deal with this? When their birthday comes around, what am I gonna go ahead and do for them? Am I gonna go ahead and just write out a check or am I gonna do something that's going to be creative for them on their behalf? And those are some of the things that I ended up touching on in this book. Um, when I ended up giving this book out to, to a few people to go ahead and read it, the number one thing that a lot of people ended up saying that was by far the most important was the chapter on forgiveness. And it's, it's one of those areas that I don't think a lot of people really think much about because they're always thinking about, well, how do I end up getting my relationship back with my kids? How do I deal with this stuff with child support? How do I deal with the things with the court? How do I deal with, um, um, my parents that uh, are constantly complaining that they don't get a, a relationship with my kids. Um, and they were like, you know, when you understand how to forgive in the whole situation, a lot of this stuff just kind of dissipates for the most part. And because of everything that I've gone through, I've had to compile a lot of it into a book. And I said, you know, this would be important if I were going through this again, I didn't know what I was getting myself involved with and I didn't know how to navigate. How would I go ahead and teach myself how to navigate through this whole process? And so that is what this book is all about. 
Awesome. awesome. Definitely a valuable thing uh, for, for our viewers. Um, and I, I, as you were speaking, I'm really inspired. And I request that if the, for the first 10 people who request your book, that you uh, give it to them for no charge and charge me, please. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So reach, go to uh, give them your contact information so that they know how to request your book. Okay. I will actually post it on, uh, on your Facebook page okay. and have a link there for that. It's available on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble, on my publisher's website and several different places. Okay. So. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and uh, let's see. And um, in the comment thread, um, you can also put it in the comment thread. Uh, of, of the show and um, and we'll take a, we'll deal with uh, the, the details offline for that so if you're interested in uh, Cal's book called X's and O's and uh, to help you navigate through this this uh, tumultuous time in your life please reach out to him uh, to get his book first Thanks 10 so <clears throat> Uh, anything else, Bud? Well, first of all, uh, Janica, another uh, empowering and awesome show. And when I knew, and I admittedly have not read Cal's book yet, but I'm excited, X is and O's, everybody out there, uh, go get a copy of that. I'm looking forward to reading it, especially after speaking uh, with, with Cal and seeing his, the direction of that book in terms of your value and, and, and uh, tools. And we talked about trying to give people those, those tools that, you know, he never had, and we never had, and not in a woe with me sort of way, but an empowering way. Hey, we want to pay it for the things that we learned. So go out and grab his book, Danica. I'm excited. Uh, every day is a new opportunity. I thank everybody out there, and we'll get to the closing in a minute. Danica. Is that where All we're right. going out? Going to give Cal another chance to say goodbye, or is that what we're going to do here? Yes, Chris, what, what would you like, to, what lasting, what, what words would you like to leave with our viewers before we end the show? Well, I know that this is a hard time for a lot of people with the holidays, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, or what have you. Um, I want to just be able to just speak words of life into this situation. I know you may not have that opportunity to speak to your kids or to hear from them or to spend that time with them, but don't lose hope. Your kids were given to you with special purpose. And the only parent that was meant for them was, was you. So don't lose hope on that. Um, continue uh, and stay strong. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for those words. Absolutely. All right, guys. All right, here we go. This is the closing. First of all, everybody out there, we want to thank, first of all, Cal for coming on and joining us and taking the time out. It's been empowering, it's been incredible. incredible. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, to everybody out there, quickly, uh, look at everything. There's no, no such word as regret anymore, and there's no such word as obstacle. Look at everything as an opportunity. Get excited, uh, because sometimes when you're, you're given a hard turn in life, it's the universe putting you on the right course, even though at the time it feels like you're way off. You're getting there. Everybody out there, keep loving. Uh, again, this is Bud Vino, December 18th. We're going on at about 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Danica Joan, I love you so much. It's getting better and better. We're having a lot of fun. And thank you for the support, everybody out there. To my wife, Alice, and I love you, my boys. Everybody out there, keep your chins up. And to my mother-in-law, Danica, I love so much. She's so supportive. And she's, she's such a wonderful woman with the Christmas season coming up. I'm so thankful for these opportunities and for all the people out there. So, again, look at every obstacle from now on. Put the word opportunity into your head. Custody Matters Live. We love you, everybody out there. Chins up. Thank you so much, Janet, and everybody else. All right.